For our next story, we turn to Israel, the promised land. The country's former leader has made a promising comeback. I am talking about Benjamin Netanyahu. Israel's longest serving premier, the comeback king, a moniker he always lives up to. And I say this because in his long political career, Netanyahu has been written off several times and each time he has made a stronger comeback. And this time it's no different. After just 17 months in opposition, Netanyahu has made a yet another stunning comeback. He has been sworn in as the Prime Minister once again, and guess what he plans to do now? One of Netanyahu's first moves will be this. Strengthening the settlements in the West Bank. Legalizing dozens of previously built Jewish outposts. And in the long run, annex the entire territory. I'm not saying this, Netanyahu is. On Wednesday, in fact, his incoming government, which is going to be the most religious and the most right-wing government in history, released a lengthy coalition agreement. An agreement between all its hardline allies. And here's what the agreement states. One, advance and develop settlements in all parts of Israel, including Judea and Samaria, the biblical names for the West Bank. Two, legalize wildcat settlement outposts in line with Israel's national and international interests. Number three, expand and vastly increase government funding for Israeli settlements. Now, these are some big moves and they could put the new government at odds with Israel's allies. Even Israel's own people for that matter. And I say this because what these moves intend to do is change the status quo of the West Bank. A region that Palestinians consider to be the heartland for their future independent state. For the unworst, this is the region I'm talking about. This chunk of land located east of Israel. It's home to nearly 3 million Palestinians. In 1967, Israel took control of this region. And since then, it has allowed Jewish settlers to move in. But many still consider it illegally occupied Palestinian land. And it doesn't end there. In 2002, Israel approved construction of a barrier around the West Bank after a series of deadly attacks by Palestinian militants. This barrier has electronic fencing, ditches and watchtowers. Its concrete walls measure around 8 to 9 meters high. It has strips of razor wire around 70 to 80 meters wide. The aim of this barrier was to encircle Palestinian communities. And it didn't end there. Israel also started sending settlers to the West Bank. And these settlers set up civilian communities that were majorly of Jewish ethnicity. I have some numbers for you now. As of 2022, there are 140 Israeli settlements in the West Bank. And they include over 12 settlements in East Jerusalem. In addition, there are over 100 Israeli military posts here. And if I speak of settlers, over 450,000 of them live in the West Bank. In East Jerusalem, there are an additional 220,000 settlers. So Israel's planned move is to give legitimacy to these settlements. A move that the Palestinian authorities are calling illegal. They say that this move violates several UN principles. The spokesperson of the Palestinian presidency has issued a statement, in fact. It says, and I'm quoting from it, the announcement is contradictory to all resolutions of international legitimacy. Most notably, resolution number 2334 issued by the UN Security Council. Now, remember, in December 2016, the UN Security Council had asked Israel to immediately seize all settlement activities and withdraw itself from the area. The Palestinian presidency wants the incoming government to abide by this. Hamas, the Palestinian Islamist movement, has also issued a detailed statement. It has warned that such policies will trigger major unrest in Israel. Listen to this. 
It is clear today we are facing a new Zionist government, the most extreme, terrorist, racist and fascist government, with policies that clearly escalate the aggression against our sanctities, our people and our Palestinian land. This opens the way to real escalation on the ground in all arenas. We in Hamas movement issue a clear warning that the policies of this incoming government represent a triggering point for major unrest which may extend beyond Palestine. And it gets more interesting. Have a look at this headline. The King of Jordan, Abdullah II, has also jumped into this debate. He has warned that the he has warned the incoming government against crossing any red lines, primarily on Jerusalem's holy sites. Remember, Jerusalem borders the state of Israel and the West Bank. And the King of Jordan says that this alleged expansion plan should not do any harm to Jerusalem's holy sites. Let me tell you his reasons behind this. First, let me read out the statement that he made. I'm quoting. If people want to get into a conflict with us, we are quite prepared. I always like to believe that let's look at the glass half full, but we have certain red lines. And if people want to push those red lines, then we will deal with that. Next question, why is the King of Jordan so concerned? What does he have to do with all of this? To start with, he is a member of the Hashemite dynasty, a dynasty considered pious by Muslims. And why is that? Because its members are apparently direct descendants of Prophet Muhammad. Secondly, this dynasty has been the custodian of Jerusalem's holy sites since 1924. And so it sees itself as the guardian of the religious rights of Muslims. In fact, until 1967, Jerusalem's old city was controlled by Jordan after Israel took over the city post the Six-Day War. It allowed the Jordanian Waqf to maintain its authority. So just to put this simply, any changes in Jerusalem or to the status of its religious sites is liable to spark protests from Jordan. And why just Jordan for that matter? It will be safe to say that the wider Muslim world could also rise in protest. You see, the Temple Mount, which houses the Al-Aqsa Mosque, is the third holiest site in Islam. Because on top of the, on top of the Temple Mount sits the Dome of the Rock. This is where Muslims say Prophet Muhammad ascended to the heavens. But the thing is, even Jews consider Jerusalem holy. In Hebrew, they call it Yerushalayim. They say Temple Mounts, where two biblical Jewish temples stood thousands of years ago. The western wall within Temple Mount is said to be the last remnant of those temples. And today, it is considered to be the holiest site in Judaism. When Jews pray, they face the western wall in Jerusalem just like Muslims face the Kaaba in Mecca. For both religions, essentially, for both Israelis and Palestinians, for both Jewish people and the Islamic world, Jerusalem holds a sacred and important place. So if the incoming Netanyahu government embarks on this planned mission, it could ruffle a lot of feathers in West Asia. It could also affect the Abraham Accords the peace treaties that were signed between Israel and a host of other countries. Will Netanyahu's planned expansion of settlements in the West Bank send these accords for a toss? Only time will tell. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.